Let's get it. There's something that bothers me throughout the thematic sense of this show where women are broken down to essentially their uh, lady bids. And I don't want to be too graphic with it, but that's essentially how they're broken down. Even when they talk about or complain about how people see their relationships, they always complain about, oh, well, when I talk to so-and-so when they view this, they always have these questions about, do you guys all jump in the bed at the same time? And what's it like to share your husband with some other woman in an intimate sense and all that kind of thing? And there's always like this big to-do and everybody pretends like they're above that conversation and they can't believe that they're asking this when in fact... Half the time, they're the ones who actually bring it up. When they talk to their daughters, they basically tell their daughters that your value is what's between your legs and not what's between your ears. And that's a constant theme between a lot of these stories. And I disagree with it. Now, I brought some receipts to or some examples of some of the things that I wanted to talk about, specifically from the episode where Madison went off to, this is Janelle and Cody's daughter oldest daughter, where she went off to college back in Utah, and some of the messages that Cody was saying, like that last big speech that he was giving his daughter, and the warnings he was giving her, uh, and what he chose to warn her about. I think that shows a great deal of importance about what's important to you. Now, before I get into it, I would just ask that if you're enjoying the content, you consider giving me a thumbs up. It doesn't cost you nothing. Come on now, help a brother out. Also, if you really want to help a brother out, Go ahead and hit that subscribe button <laughs> if you're not subscribed. It helps the channel out. It helps me out. Hey, who doesn't want to help a brother out? So go ahead and give me that HBO special by clicking the subscribe button and ringing the bell for notifications. And you'll be notified when I upload new videos and hopefully soon, very soon when I go live and I start doing this, my videos will appear in your feed. All right, let's get to it. So what I'm specifically talking about, because again, I don't have an issue with Parents having conversations with their kids because I had the same conversation with my kids. When you sit down and you talk to them and you tell them like, look, this is your body. You know, the guys don't get to decide. Your husband don't get to decide. You get to decide. And I agree with that mentality. And in fact, Cody used something similar when he was having this conversation with Madison. Let's take a look. No, for me, it's more about like... I just want you to know your body belongs to you. It doesn't belong to any man, even if you're married to him. Mm. And, and you get a say. So protect yourself if you need to. Always protect yourself. But I would just simply add, even as the father, your body doesn't belong to me. This is ultimately going to be your decision as to what you do with your body and how you conduct yourself, how you wield the power of your sexuality. And that's something that when we say it, it's cute to say, but there's a, a ultimate larger responsibility with that power. You're not just wielding the power for yourself. You're wielding the power for everybody around you. You're wielding the power and have to be responsible to the people around you. And you have to be cognizant of those decisions. If you're not set to take, take care of the ramifications or the consequences of that decision, then the people around you are going to have to deal with that consequence. And that's just something to consider. And it's not the end all be all. Don't think about me when you're making that decision. Oh, how is this going to affect dad? Like, <laughs> that's ridiculous. That's stupid. What I'm saying is, is that you just have to look at the entire field. Is this something that you want to do? And that's where I, I kind of fall on a lot of this. And I disagree, like, because I think that this is a great message. I think that this is an awesome message. But I think that ultimately this is a message that should have happened before you drop your daughter off to college. And you're going to be 100 miles away or five, six hours away, probably 200, 200 miles away or whatever. If you're around the corner, it's too late for you to have this conversation when your daughter's 18, 19 years old. This is a conversation you should have had with her early on. But in addition to that, you see what's important to a person by what they talk about, what they focus on. A lot of times when people, like for instance, when people make accusations against you and they accuse you of doing something or they make a big deal of something, what they're telling you isn't what you did or what you didn't do is necessarily a big deal. 
in its in and of itself, what they're telling you is it's a big deal to me. <laughs> So when you sit around and all you can talk about is, oh, you know, if a boy come over here and he goes too far, you know, his finger, his eye should come out with your finger. And if, you know, something happens, I'll be up here so quick. Maybe I'll stay up here and try to intimidate all the boys. That's not the message that I would necessarily send to him, because there is a point where you also have to talk to your boys about being responsible. You know, you go out here just because you might not carry the baby. If you make a baby, you will have to take care of that baby son and that's the position that you should take as the father if you make if you, if you do this make sure that you're responsible it's not just on her it's on you too so i expect you to be a man and make man decisions because when you're talking about doing this this is adult time so if you're going to do this then you need to be a man doing this you need to be a woman doing this this is not child play this ain't kitty time you know what I mean? This is not, <laughs> this ain't no kindergarten, you know, ring around the rosies, a hide and go seek. <laughs> this is, this is man, woman decisions. This is lifetime decisions. And that's ultimately what you want to try to convey to your kids. That when you're dropping them off and they're getting that taste of freedom, understand that the, this freedom, it comes with a cost. And the cost is responsibility. You can make decisions for yourself and you can build your life and it takes you a lifetime to build your reputation. You can destroy that reputation with one bad decision, one mistake. And it's not necessarily teaching your kids never to make mistakes because that would be ridiculous. You can't teach them not to make mistakes because just like you lived your life and you made mistakes, me not being a perfect person and making mistakes in my life, I fully expect that when I hit the duplicate button, the people who come after me and the folks that I copied and, uh, and, and are carbon copies of me are going to take on those same imperfections that I had. And they're going to make their own mistakes. My biggest thing is I want them to make manageable mistakes. Make mistakes that you can recover from. I try to avoid big, life-changing, life-altering mistakes. That's my, that's my big thing. Don't do something that you're going to have to carry around with you for the rest of your life and will impact you in the future. Another thing that I try to pass on to my kids as far as mistakes, if you're going to make a mistake, make sure it's your mistake. Don't be making somebody else's mistake because it's something that they want to do. Be a leader don't be a follower. And that kind of goes into the whole idea of association. There is a point where if when, when, a, when you drop your kids off or they experience that freedom, and again, this is a message that you should be trying to tell your kids early on when they're hanging out with people in high school and in an environment that you have some control over. You want to make sure that you're associating with the type of people who are reflective of where you want to be. If you want to see where you are in life, look at the people that you spend your time with. If you spend your time with gutter trash people, you are in the gutter trash. You're there too. You are not better than the people that you hang out with. These are the people that you are associating with. These are the people that you spend your time with. These are the people that you laugh and giggle with and share your hopes and dreams with. These are you. These people are you. So make sure that when you spend that time, you're spending it with people who are reflecting where you want to be. I'm not saying that you have to hang out with rich folks and people who have these big fancy jobs and live in big homes. What I am saying, though, is that if you are a motivated person, hang out with motivated people. There's another saying that I always loved, and that comes down to a simple thing of when you dance with the devil, you don't change the devil. The devil changes you. When you hang out with lazy people, uh, people who are reckless sexually, people who act immorally, people who do the wrong thing, and people who don't take into account the consequences of their actions, and these are the people that you choose to spend your time with, you're not going to change them. They're going to change you. Because the easiest thing in the world to do is oftentimes the wrong thing. And when you're hanging out with the wrong people, they normalize bad behavior. So instead of them preaching to her about boyfriends who could derail them, talk to her about 
her friends who are more likely to de derail her because they normalize going out with the bad dude or the idiot or the abusive guy or the guy who talked rough to him or what, God forbid want to put his hands on her. Those are the people that you want to watch out for. And this, and again, this is something that, that goes beyond just the limitation of you talking to your daughter about it. There are plenty of guys, as the old folks used to say back in the day, the cemetery is full of guys who went out and followed behind somebody else because they thought it was a good idea or got in a fight because that was their bro and they wanted to make sure that everybody knew who they was and they had to rep they said or whatever the foolishness thing is of the moment. They had to protect the block that they don't own jack shit on and they go out and get their brain stomped out. Or your son goes out with a young lady who likes her man fighting all the time, defending her honor, so she goes out and intentionally flirts with guys and get guys to be aggressive with her or tries to always run back and tell you how this guy, that guy offended her. You need to go over there and, and knock four of his teeth out and, and all that. Cemetery and prison is full of people like that. Not to mention, you know, there's always the, if a guy comes over, you got to take his finger out with your, take his eye out with your finger. What about the young lady who meets your son on Tinder? And she all sexy, you know, <laughs> booty popping, <laughs> you know, <laughs> small in the waist, pretty in the face, got old place, will spray you with mace, you know what I mean, off the hook, beautiful. And she all of a sudden want to meet up with him and hook up with him, so he all about that life. So he go over to her place late one evening, walk into the room, pocket full of condos, and open the door, flip the light switch, and there's eight guys in there waiting for his dumb ass. This happens too, but you don't see the Brown family having that conversation with their sons. Now, granted, in most situations as a father, we always want to sit there and have these protective talks with our kids, particularly our daughters. And it kind of trips me out a little bit. You, you know, when guys want to have the big talk with their daughters and they want to express all this and they tell them about how they willing to go to jail and kill or die for their they daughter and, and they ain't afraid of prison. You know, and they're, they're not afraid to, you're, you're not afraid to spend the rest of your life in jail because somebody took your daughter's honor and they disrespected her. But at the same time, Cody will not spend five minutes talk, pick up the phone and call his daughter to see how she's doing. He won't spend an afternoon to go check on his daughters when she's coming home from school. Hey, baby, how was school today? Did you make any friends? Did you eat your lunch? Did you have a good time riding a bus? He won't do any of that. Or good for goodness, for gracious, she falls off a horse and damn near break her back. Or she has a back problem and she has to go to New York for a week and she's going to get a back splayed open like a damn fish and you don't have any issues. She's getting deboned. You don't have no issues with sending her off by herself. And then good luck, buddy. Well, you know, COVID, I can't, I can't touch it. And besides, I got the little ones that I got to worry about. This is, this is what I'm talking about. Why are you so willing to go to jail for the rest of your life, prospectively, but you can't make the sacrifice to spend time with your kid when they are going to mem remember it, and more importantly, when they need you to? Many of us remember this scene from season 17 when he was talking about his his willingness or how he viewed his relationship with his older daughter. Teenage kids don't need parents quite like, um, you know, preteens do. And yeah, they so do. The, the fact that Truly and I have these long conversations, we talk about what she's doing and stuff like that, Even she's probably. actually engaging me. That's still an important factor. It's important for Truly. It's important for me. Now, you know your ass in trouble when you lose a Robin. <laughs> when you lose a Robin, dude, Robin is one of the ride and dies. Like, she she all about Cody. Cody can't do no wrong. But he started talking that craziness, even she looking all over the sky. Because when pushing down the shelf, everybody in that situation understood what was happening. And for those who may not be aware, let me clue you in. What was happening was, this is the point where... <laughs> Christine was starting to break away from Cody. She hadn't quite left him yet, but she was starting to break away from him. Isabel, the daughter who went away and got, a, got her whole back surgery done, 
to get fixed. Screws driven into her spine. When she she was 18, she was about to graduate. She was 17, eight, about to turn 18, about to graduate from high school, going to go on to college, and Cody had no control over it. He couldn't use her to control his wife. So he focused or hyper-focused on his youngest daughter as a means to control his wife. It had nothing to do with spending time with her or you know wanting to be around her. It was just a way for him to put a yoke around his wife or his girlfriend's neck or his baby mama neck to control her movements and her actions. Simple as that. And I have a problem with that because, again, if you are going to take the mantle as a father, this is your responsibility. You have a responsibility to try to pass on your knowledge, your experience, your wisdom. Take that time to ask those questions. Don't just worry about what's happening between her legs. Worry about what's happening between her ears. Worry about what she's doing. And when you talk about her protecting herself, it's not just her protecting her chastity or her purity or her virginity. What you want her to do is focus on protecting her hopes, her dreams, her mindset, her 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 what she wants to do for herself. Protect the person that you want to be because that's the person that I'm in love with as your father. I don't just love you for who you are. I also love you for what you can be. And that's the difference. Like To me, that's just the subtle difference. And when you're having these big conversations with them, the conversations that you're having, because the role to me as a father is not just to keep them from doing the wrong thing, but I want to give them the experience and the wisdom so that they can navigate this world successfully in my absence. Everything I do is to prepare them for when I'm not around anymore. And one of the most ridiculous things I've ever heard a person say out of their mouth on TV or even in a room by themselves alone in the dark is that your kids don't need you after a certain age. I am telling you now, I'm damn middle age, and my mother passed away a little bit ago, and I shared this before. There's not a day that goes by that I don't look to my mother for, wish I had her around to ask a question or to have a conversation. My father's still around. I still talk to him. We still hang. We cool in the gang. But there's not a day that goes by that I don't look for that resource, that other resource that I'm missing. So as a father, for you to sit there and say that your daughter will be okay with you not being around, that only tells me that you're not around and you have no impact on your kid's life. Now, I apologize that I'm ranting a little bit. I wanted to do some more stuff with regard to this because I do have the receipts, but I think that I'm going to leave this video where it is and maybe I'm going to readdress it on one of the lives. All right, that's my take. I'm James. This has been my take on reality. And I'm out. Cause I've been living life.